if you look at children, children are almost, and I would almost say definitely, but almost immune from this disease. So few, it's, they've got stronger, hard to believe, I don't know how you feel about it, but they have much stronger immune systems than we do somehow for this. And they do it, they, they don't have a problem. They just don't have a problem. Well, they're not immune. A recent study found children under five have a viral load of 10 to 100 times uh, more than older children and adults. And even if they're not sick themselves, studies do show children can spread the virus. Dr. Fauci saying, quote, it's been shown that children from 10 to 19 can transmit the virus to adults as well as adults can. And when it comes to kids younger than 10, we know they have those high viral loads. We actually still, amazingly and unacceptably, frankly, still don't know how they transmit the disease. So when you don't have all the facts, you can't claim children are immune. Look, we all wish this thing would go away, but wishing it so does not make it so. It's time for the president to stop saying that and start doing specific things. Caitlin Collins is out front at the White House tonight. Caitlin, the president doubling down tonight, just saying it yet again, uh, that the virus is going to go away. Yep, he has said it for months and it has not gone away and he is going to continue to say it, it appears, until there is some kind of vaccine or more therapeutics are developed. And Aaron, he also did not back off what he said about children earlier today, that virtually immune comment that you just played. But instead, when he was asked at the briefing about it, he said that what he meant by that is that children don't get as sick as some adults do, that we know there have been children who have gotten really ill with this if they do have some kind of underlying illness. And Facebook is clearly so troubled by the president's post and that comment about children that they have removed a video that was on President Trump's Facebook page of him making that comment mm -hmm. that he believes children are virtually immune from this from his page tonight because they say it's misinformation saying that, you know, a certain age group is immune from this when the doctors and the health experts say that's not the case. That's notable because it's the first time I believe that Facebook has removed anything from the president's page and comes, of course, as you've seen Twitter flag several of his posts about COVID-19 as well. And what was really interesting today is you saw him in the Oval Office meeting with the governor of Arizona, Doug Ducey, and he was praising his handling of the COVID-19 outbreaks and the surges that they had in their state. But when he was asked about that idea that Ducey had where they delayed the opening of schools in Arizona. The president didn't agree with that, but the governor did that in part to help stop those surges in cases, he said. Mm -hmm. But the president said he maintains he still thinks that schools should be reopened, as, of course, he's insisted for several weeks. All right, Caitlin, thank you very much. Out front tonight, Dr. Sanjay Gupta and Dr. Eileen Marty. She's an infectious disease professor at Florida International University. Her state today hit a grim milestone. 500,000 cases. So Sanjay, um, look, you spent an hour today with Dr. Anthony Fauci and you talked about a lot of things. You talked about vaccines, you talked about testing, you talked about it all. And he's sending a very different message than the president. I, I, I found it disturbing because it was just consistent, right? It was on every single point you talked about. He seemed to be saying the opposite. Yeah, he, he really did. He was he was pretty candid uh, today, and, and many of the same points that you're just mentioning with Caitlin. You know, just where what is the United States' overall stature in the world when it comes to this? And you know, you heard over the last couple of days, hey, we're not doing so bad. Uh, you know, we're we're one of the worst, if not the worst, as you as you mentioned in the opening part of the show today. I mean, that's what Dr. Fauci said. Testing. Big deal, right? And you, you've heard all, over and over again from President Trump, look, maybe we're doing too much testing. What Dr. Fauci said today, and it was probably the strongest I've heard him say, talk about this, he said, it is unacceptable where we are with testing, period, was how he put it. We're simply not doing enough. And then this, this point about immunity with children, I, you know, I get the sense that maybe uh, the president doesn't, uh, doesn't know what the word immune means. It means when someone becomes infected. Uh, we know, we just did the calculations right before your show tonight, Aaron, that uh, between 250 and 350,000 children have been infected by this uh, virus. We know that um, children are less likely to become ill, very ill from this. Although, you know, as we start to open up schools and, and you get a lot of kids clustering together, there's no doubt that there's going to be an increase in infection rates and possibly an increase in serious illness as a result of it. It'll still be lower than adults, but that's right. a real concern, a real, real uh, worry for parents. So, Dr. Marty, you know, the president claims schools should reopen, uh, you know, because of this point he said about children are almost immune. Um, I just want to look at data from your state. A 21 percent increase in the number of children under the age of 17 testing positive for coronavirus and a 28 percent increase in the number of children being hospitalized. Obviously, these are offer ex of extremely low numbers, which I think is important to emphasize. But you have seen this big jump. Um, so what does this tell you about children and, and how sick they get? 
Well, having seen children sick with COVID-19 and having known now we've had several deaths of children with COVID-19, I think that um, it's <laughs> not to mention multi-system inflammatory disease, where actually where I am in Miami-Dade, uh, we have one third of the um, Kawasaki type syndrome, the multi-system inflammatory disease in the state. Um, I think that we definitely see very serious illness in children, but even that is not even the point. The point is um, all this entire conversation is missing the most important point. And that is when you said earlier in the show that children have high viral loads, let me translate that. That means they can transmit the virus to other people. And schools don't just contain children. They contain adults doing everything from janitorial work to administrators, such as the principal, to the teachers and everyone else. And these children do not live at home alone and they do not get to school uh, rarely unless they do walk to school. But generally speaking, uh, you know, if they're transported to school, it's an adult that transports them. There are many adults that can be infected by these children. That's the point. So, so Sanjay, you know, when we look at the, the, the issue with all of these kids going back to school, and I know many aren't, but in many places they are, and you know, places like New York where they have a positivity rate of 1%, um, that has been the, the metric, right? That, that they're fine to go back in some capacity as they are. But we have this issue around the country as it's 5 million cases of who's spreading it. And you asked Dr. Fauci about that. What is driving this new case load that we are seeing now since it's not testing? And here's what he said. The good news about COVID-19 is that about 40% of the population has no symptoms when they get infected. That's good. I mean, it, you get infected, you get no symptoms. The bad news for messaging is that 40% of the population get no symptoms. And, and Sanjay, that is the bad news, right? Because you still have people saying, well, because 40% of people don't have symptoms, this isn't that serious. We are still hearing that. And yes, it's often uh, you know, a political point, but we're still hearing it. Right. And, and both things can be true. Right. I mean, th th that's the thing is that, you know, we're capable of more abstract thinking. This is an unusual virus in this regard. Typically, when people are very contagious, they may be coughing and sneezing and not feeling well, hopefully staying at home with this virus, as we've known since really middle of February. People can spread this asymptomatically. There's even been uh, some evidence that people are more likely to spread this before they develop symptoms. It makes it challenging. But it also makes the strategy in terms of how to deal with this, uh, I think, a little bit clearer. You know, that's why people are recommended to wear masks when they go out in public. You don't know because we don't have inadequate testing. You don't know for certain you're not harboring the virus in your body. Right. So how best to decrease the transmission? We all have a role. Wear a mask. And, and I think that that's in. the point Dr. Gonna, Fauci was I'm making. I'm going to weigh in on this. Go ahead, Dr. I'm going to weigh in on this because um, I think uh, there's a few points here. First of all, there's plenty of... Uh, viruses, bacteria, et cetera, that people carry around with them that do not make that individual ill, they can cause disease in others. 45% um, of people carry the horrible bacteria MRSA in their nose with no side effects. This is not an uncommon situation. But with this virus, here's a few other points. Yes, maybe 40% of people do not have symptoms this time around. We don't know what's gonna happen to those people the second time around. Mm. Second of all, a fair percentage of those individuals who are not showing symptoms, if you do serious testing on them, you do find that they have changes in their bodies that may have consequences for the future, neurologically, cardiologically, pulp, yeah. uh, their, their lungs, et cetera. And that's, I know that's important. And people who have even gotten sick and gotten better, I mean, we don't know now whether some of these, these neurocognitive issues could be lifelong. I mean, some of them are pretty terrifying, and we, we've talked about that. Sanjay, before we go, Alex Azar today, the Health and Human Services Secretary, said the U.S. has seen the most historic advances in vaccine development over the last two weeks. You know, and that, that we're on track for many, many millions of doses, possibly of a gold standard vaccine by the beginning of the year. Do you think that, that this is really possible, that there is going to be possibly some silver bullet solution? 
Well, I, th I think we are, are certainly making a lot of progress with a, a vaccine. I mean, and I keep asking, you know, this has been a big topic of conversation. I'm making calls about this all the time to sources. And frankly, I was surprised at the enthusiasm I was getting from some of these hardcore scientists about this, because typically it takes a long time to make a vaccine. But even Dr. Fauci today said, look, we have made some remarkable, we've had a remarkable pace when it comes to the innovation around the vaccine. Two points, though. We still don't have it. And we got to get data to actually show that it works. Pro early promising data, but you know, until we actually prove that this works in large populations of people, old and young, people with pre-existing medical conditions, we won't know for sure. Second thing, I don't know that I would describe it as a silver bullet. You know, it, we don't know how protective it will be. It may require two shots. It may require these, what are called adjuvants to sort of boost up the effectiveness of the vaccine. So, and people got to take it ultimately if it, it does become available. So a lot of work to be done, but, but still, Promising, Aaron. All right. Dr. Gupta, Dr. Marty, thank you both.